the know and have made it this far through the bracket. Uh, but I am also especially excited because, yeah, I think, you know, Joseph and Audi are two players I've had my eye out on, especially in this last year. We just talked about Joseph's accomplishments. He has been one of the outstanding players in the uh, bracket or in the circuit, really, in uh, recent years, uh, making it to the global finals of the Players' Cup just a little bit ago as well. Adi, on the other hand, I think is a player that I've been especially impressed by is in, in these last couple of months. It feels like his knowledge of the metagame is really, really sharp. He's always able to identify what the best trends are going into major events. And here he is with a very, very deep run, you know, win here will secure him a spot in the global final. So this matchup is also pretty interesting. We've got that Colossal, you know, Sierra, we saw that Colossal in action yesterday. We know that Joseph is really good at piloting it. And it's especially interesting because, you know, it's Colossal versus Sun and Groudon typically is really good against Colossal, right? It has that super effective ground type damage and can really just uh, threaten it with the Max Quake. But Joseph actually has that Evil Tall and Groudon's typically like to use Swords Dance, you know, before actually starting to attack. But uh, Evil Tall with that potential foul play can do a lot of damage to Groudon. So I think the a lot of this dynamic about this matchup is how does Joseph actually position his Colossal? And, you know, does he bring that Evil Tall and when does he bring it out to par properly support it to make sure that the Groudon on the opposing side doesn't just potentially sweep? And then from Adi's perspective, you really got to consider, okay, who am I going to Dynamax? You have Charizard, you have Venusaur, you have Groudon. Groudon normally feels like a pretty good option, but because there's an Evil Tall and an Incineroar on the other side, not sure it's actually the number one priority. So Venusaur might be something to look towards here in the early games. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a fantastic match. I'm so excited to get into it. So let's just get into this match. I'm, I just can't wait. Yeah, and something like this, you know, pressure is on, but you know you can lose here and still make it to the global finals, but it would be nice to secure that win in advance on immediately. Hmm. Audi starting with that Grim Snarl next to the Venusaur here and on Joe's side of the field, that Dragapult coming out right away next to that Colossal. Yeah, so classic Dragapult Colossal lead. You know, this is an example of a matchup where there's not actually too much to just immediately stop Dragapult plus Colossal, right? And with this lead from Adi, you're actually going to outspeed with the Colossal after you get the Steam Engine and the Weakness Policy activation. So no switches immediately. It's just going to be a Dynamax. And let's see how this turn plays out. Mm -hmm. Max Venusaur coming out on Adi's side. I'm really interested about the no switch. Um, Especially with that Earth Power on the Venusaur here, which is a little scary. Um, Joe's gonna go ahead and Dynamax that Colossal right off of the bat here. Both players looking to put some pressure out on the field. Yeah, and I'm really curious. We know what Joseph's going for here. So, I mean, Grimmsnarl's not going to go for a fake out in this position. So maybe something like a light screen, a thunder wave, uh, fake tears even are all possibilities. And let's see. All right, light screen coming up from the Grim Snarl, and the Dragapult just going for that surf, of course. Classic Colossal start, activating that steam engine as well as getting the weakness policy off on this Colossal. So it's going to be going fast and hitting hard here. And let's see what this Colossal does with the Max Flare going into this Venusaur. <laughs> dealing a good <laughs> chunk of damage, but that light screen can it so this KO isn't getting picked up in this Venusaur with its <laughs> own weakness policy here is going to be hitting back hard with that Max Quake. There is that Max Quick you were talking about, Sierra, and that's actually enough to pick up the one-hit KO. That's not really what you want to see if you're Joseph. I mean, normally with Colossal, you know, you want to either get multiple hits off or at least get that G-Max vocal width off, but now Venusaur is hung on, and Joseph actually set up the sun for Adi, so Adi doesn't even need to switch out into something like that Groudon. This Venusaur now will just be able to outspeed everything on Joseph's end, and I mean, we see the Pokemon that Joseph's brought into this game, right? It's Dragapult, Incineroar, and the Evoltal. Uh, Evoltal is probably the best damage dealer at this point. The Dragapult is very support oriented, so it's definitely not the first turn that you really want to have uh, from Joseph's end. Adi going for a really safe play of that light screen. The Venusaur with that weakness policy build, uh, that is something that is a little bit less common, but certainly can put in a lot of work. And Adi's just in such a good spot now, especially because you can just go for that G-Max Vine Lash and set up the residual damage. It's so difficult to deal with the residual damage stacking up over the next couple of turns. Mm -hmm. Grimstarl getting Reflect up, so any damage is going to be limited. And that Venusaur going for that G-Max Vine Lash into the Dragapult, dealing a good amount of damage and setting Vines. The Dragapult with the Will-O-Wisp, it is going to connect onto that Grimmsnarl here. And this 
Evil Tall with that foul play into the Venusaur. So <laughs> close, but not quite picking up that KO here. Yeah, not enough. You know, I was curious whether or not Oblivion Wing would actually finish it off, but of course that light screen was up, and Evil Tall not exactly the uh, most offensive of restricted picks there. But Adi actually even gets another potential turn here with this Evil Tall, and. The thing about the residual effect is that it's so strong, especially if you don't actually have a Dynamax on the field, right? Because everything is just taking one six damage every turn. So Adi still has two Pokemon in the back. Now the Venusaur here is likely going to feign. You have to obviously worry about something like a Sucker Punch. Adi could Max Guard here if he was worried about Sucker Punch. But the reality is Adi doesn't even need to do that much damage, right? The Vine Lash will do the damage for him these next couple of turns. So you just need to make sure Joseph doesn't pick up any big surprise knockouts in the next couple of turns and the game should be yours. Yeah, Joseph swapping out that Dragapult for the Incineroar, and that G Max Venusaur is just going to go for the Max Guard. Grimmsnarl with the Spirit Break into the Evil Tall. A little bit of damage here, as well as that special attack drop. And this Vine Flash damage, as you said, is definitely just going to be slowly adding up over time here. Yeah, so I'm trying to think, you know, what's Joseph's path to victory at this point? I think. The upside for Evil Tall is that Evil Tall can heal itself through Oblivion Wing. Now, the downside is Pokemon like Incineroar and Dragapult can actually really heal, especially because, uh, yeah, there's just no healing move, right? So, with Evil Tall, you basically have to hope to survive for a while and keep going for Oblivion Wings to make sure, like, you know, you can't just get uh, KO'd immediately. Uh, from Adi's perspective at this point, once again, there's still two Pokemon in the back. Groudon surely is in the back, and that alone, like, already looks really good, so... I think Adi just wants to make sure he gets some guaranteed damage off on a turn-to-turn -turn basis and wants to make sure Joseph can't heal too much with those Oblivion Wings. Mm -hmm. Fake out from the Incineroar is going to pick up that KO on the Venusaur as the Evil Toll is going to go for a foul play into the Grimmsnarl, dealing barely any damage here. Grimmsnarl hitting back with a Spirit Break. A bit more damage being done as well as getting another special attack drop here and... I mean, this damage at the end of every turn is really just adding up, and Joseph's definitely being put into a little bit of a pinch here. Yeah, and it really all started from turn one. I think, you know, Joseph gambling a little bit there, maybe expecting to pick up that KO onto Venusaur, uh, not expecting it to be as bulky as it was, right? The combination of Adi setting up that light screen and Venusaur being trained the way it was allowed it to survive and then just retaliate back with a big KO. Uh, you know, the other downside often with these uh, Colossal strategies is that you will take a fair amount of damage onto the Colossal. Now in this game, you know, not really that relevant since Venusaur had that weakness policy activation, but still, you always have to be careful and make sure you don't just lose Colossal on the first turn. Uh, I think Joseph expecting that knockout onto Venusaur uh, basically gambled it there, and now it's just such a difficult spot, right? Because the Vine Lash damage is still adding up. Charizard is out on the field now. That puts on so much offensive pressure. The Evil Tall's special attack is decreased, so you're really not doing that much with your special attacks like Oblivion Wing, for example. So Charizard, I think, in a really prime position right now to just sweep through the end of the game and Adi actually hasn't even brought out his restricted Pokemon yet. <laughs> it's definitely a difficult position due to be put in here. Players just finishing up their move selections and that Evil Tall is going to be swapping out back into this Dragapult here which is barely holding on itself. None of these Pokemon are looking to too much of health. The Scorching Sands coming out from the Charizard, picking up a fair amount of damage onto that Incineroar. It is going to get some back with its berry, but all the Pokemon on Joseph's side are really hurting right now, and it just leaves Adi in a position to just keep dealing damage and be picking up these KOs just one by one here. Yeah, I think that switch is definitely the best option from Joseph's end. I mean, you basically need to position yourself to a point where you can bring in the Evil Tull and I guess hope to get a Oblivion Wing off, but yeah, I mean, Flare Blitz doesn't do that much to Charizard. Evil Tall's gonna come back in, and the, the other part of the problem is that Charizard outspeeds in this position, right? Uh, its base speed is just a little bit faster here than the Evil Tall. So, uh, Colossal is so important in this matchup if you look at Adi's team, right? Uh, it's really important in dealing with Charizard, Venusaur. You've got the potential Volklet into that Grimmsnarl as well. So, I think that. You know, Joseph just needed to get more mileage out of Colossal in this first game. And I think he's, I'm sure he's, you know, identified, hey, that that's what I need to do in the upcoming games. And I think this one is pretty much a wrap at this point. I mean, Adi still has this Charizard out in the field. You can't outspeed with Incineroar and Evil Tall unless the Charizard's, you know, not really speedy for some reason, but most of them are these days. You can always swap the Grimmsnarl out here into that presumed ground on, set up the sun so that you get the solar power for Charizard. Uh, then, you know, you can go for any combination of attacks. It's probably best to go for, you know, your 100% accurate attack so you don't risk any misses, but uh, this is pretty much all but one for Adi at this point. 
and ancient power coming out from <laughs> that Charizard here is going to clean up the KO on that evil tall here. And as you said, not much else can be left done in this match. Grimmsnarl hitting the spirit break into the Incineroar. A little bit of chip, but I mean, at this point, every single one of those little bit of chip attacks are adding up. Parting shot into the Charizard to drop that special attack, but all of this is just too, too little too late here. And surely Adi this next turn will be able to just pick up that KO. Joseph recognizing that and just leaving the match now to get started into a game two. The Ancient Power there was pretty cool because we've seen Ancient Power and Scorching Sands on this Charizard and it's also not a Life Orb Charizard, which is typically the item that most players expect uh, on a Charizard and an offensive team. Uh, I know Assault Vest Char Charizard was actually something that was trending upwards going into this tournament, uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we we're actually running the Assault Vest item, right? You typically obviously want a Fire type attack and a Flying type attack on it, so that's pretty cool to see. You know, that Ancient Power basically 100% guaranteed win as soon as you target that Evil Tall. No need to even switch out into the Groudon in that position, but I think I think the name of this game was definitely just about Colossal, right? Joseph needs to get more mileage out of his Colossal. And so uh, on turn one, you definitely don't want to, you know, be activating that Venusaur's weakness policy. You mentioned that Earth Power, that Max Quake before it even came out, Sierra. That's exactly what happened. And so if Joseph goes with the same leads, you know, I think maybe going for a Vocalith instead onto either slot would definitely help him out a little bit more because at the end of the day, the Colossal needs to stick on the field, I think, for more than just one turn. Yeah, losing the Dynamax target. The first turn for any player is devastating and the whole team at that point being pivoted around that colossal losing it just meant that there wasn't really too much Joseph could do there but i'm very intrigued to see how he's going to approach this matchup in game two so let's get into it yeah let's get started i think from both players the same pokemon makes a lot of sense it's just about how you position it and uh, how you play with it especially on this first turn because i think turn one is so volatile here right uh you have the surf opportunity from dragapult you can go for that vocal it uh now on Audi's side, you could always switch out Grimmsnarl as well into say Groudon. That sets up the sun immediately, uh, and then your Venusaur is just boosted right in the sun. But one thing you might want to watch out for potentially is that same Max Flare play. So it looks like Joseph is going to adjust his gameplay a little bit this time, targeting that Grimmsnarl down instead. Mm -hmm. On Audi's side, going for that Max Venusaur yet again here. As you mentioned last time, the Colossal not being able to get the Volcalith off to be dealing the rock damage. Joseph also recognizing that and going for that setup. I mean, that damage just adds up so much over time here. I am interested to see where the Venusaur targets, if it's going to be targeting back into the Colossal. What's nice this time around is Joseph not targeting into that Venusaur. It means that there's actually going to be no weakness policy activated. And with the bulk that we've seen on the Venusaur, not sure if it'll pick up the KO despite how much any ground move does to this Colossal. Yeah, that's a fantastic point there. So I think, you know, Adi going for that light screen makes sense. You know, like Colossal is specially oriented. Might as well just guarantee you don't take too much damage in the next couple of turns. Surf still does so much damage to that Colossal to get things started. But uh, I, I definitely like Joseph's adjustment here this time around, realizing, hey, that Max Flare is not going to KO Venus where if light screen goes up on turn one. Hmm. Fair enough. This Volcalith hitting into the Grimmsnarl is going to be a big hit and not bringing it down to the yellow not quite doing enough damage to be picking up the ko but that rock damage is going to add up to pick it up in the next couple of turns max quake here hitting into that colossal <laughs> 44 hp this colossal gets to stick around for a second turn in the second game here and i think that is going to be huge going forward yeah, that's absolutely huge. I mean, one of the questions I really have here is how the Venusaur is trained, because given how well it took that Max Flare, uh, you know, in game one, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like a super, super bulky variant, given that it's a weakness policy variant as well. So definitely curious about that, but I think Joseph in a much better spot than he was after turn one of last game, where you've gotten the Volcalith up now. You see he's opting for that Light Screen, which I think is a great option because Adi has Venusaur. He's probably got that Charizard in the back as well. Uh, I like the Max Guard play here just to make sure Colossal survives another turn. Uh, and yeah, we'll see if Adi reads into this Max Guard. Hey. Grimmsnarl taking the opportunity while it's still on the field to be setting up a Reflect as well, getting both of those screens up. The Dragapult as well setting up a light screen. 
I like the setup from both of the players here, just getting those screens up. The Venusaur going for that Vine Lash into the Colossal, looking to pick up the KO. And <laughs> unfortunately, with that Max Guard, nothing's going to happen as well. Not getting that Vine Lash damage set up as it did in the previous match. So this is really interesting because this that was a great max guard from Joseph's end. And I mean, in all fairness, Adi at best could maybe go for a max ooze or a vine lash onto like the Dragapult slot, but that's not gonna pick up a KO anyway. Uh, and I don't think the residual vine lash damage actually would have finished off Colosso. So, you know, wanted to put on the pressure against the cold. But now Groudon is out, right? You've set up the sun, but the Dragapult has will o here, so burning Groudon in itself is already huge. Uh, Colossal here, I think, likely will actually outspeed in this position as well, so we'll, we'll have to see how both players train their Colossal and Venusaurs respectively, but uh, if Joseph gets one more attack off here with Colossal, it's absolutely huge, and this will o is also honestly a really big deal because Groudon normally is something like, you know, you want to get out, maybe get a couple of Swords Dances off with and sweep with, but uh, the combination of will o with this Dragapult plus that foul play from the Evolto in the back uh, means that Groudon is in a much more compromising situation, so that's exactly why Audi probably hasn't prioritized it in this set, right? And not just lead it and try to Dynamax on turn one, because you know the opposing Dragapult has that Will-O-Wisp. Groudon just swapping out right away here, going into that Charizard to <laughs> make sure the Will-O-Wisp is not going to do anything. This Max Flare hitting into the Venusaur, and so close to picking up that KO, of course, that light screen, reducing the damage, but the Max Flare getting some more damage with the Sun, but not quite there. And it will activate that weakness policy. The Vine Lash hitting into the Colossal, finally taking it out and setting that Vine Lash damage for the turns to be coming up here. Yeah, finally gets the knockout, but you know, in game one, Venusaur managed to knock out Colossal in one hit. This time around, it took three hits just to knock out the uh, Max Colossal there. So the Charizard switching is nice, you know, it doesn't get burnt there in the end. And Venusaur is actually going to hang on a little bit after the Volklith, but you can see why Colossal and Venusaur are such top picks in this format, right? The residual effects just add up so much here in the late game. And I think Joseph has really maneuvered this early game quite nicely. And what's tough for Adi now is, you know, where is the damage actually coming from in this late game? The Venusaur is very close to fainting at this point. Uh, Charizard here, you know, does have the sun up, but not going to do that much damage into an Incineroar and Dragapult. And Incineroar right now nicely also has fake out pressure. So you can choose to fake out either target here. While Dragapult's not doing that much damage, you know, you can just safely go for breaking swipes at this point. As soon as Groudon comes in, you might want to burn that. But uh, the main thing here is that Joseph still has that Evil Tall in the back as well. And I think that he's definitely positioned himself better this time around because Colossal was able to put in so much more work. Mm -hmm. And especially as well with all the ways to re be reducing damage from Audi's side on Joe's side here. Now that the Venusaur is going to be... <laughs> Is, is so low, so either it's going to switch out or it's going to get KO'd on this turn here. The fake out will be going into that Venusaur, so one of the main ways of applying pressure is being taken out here. The Dragapult going for that breaking swipe, dealing an, a nice little bit of chip damage here. Attack drop not going to be relevant on this Charizard, and an Air Slash coming out from the Charizard into the Dragapult, also picking up some chip damage, but... <laughs> A nice little chunk of damage being taken away from the soil power and all of these all of these lasting effects really putting in a lot of work here <laughs> yeah absolutely putting in a lot of work and i think the tough thing here is that Audi's charizard you know charizard's already a frail pokemon right and it can't really heal itself either so each turn just adds up and then solar power just hurts the charizard even more right so it's basically losing over a quarter of its health in each turn and it's just adding up so quickly so you know, Adi still has that Groudon in the back, but with Joseph with that Evil Tall in the back now, I think it's just in a really, really tough position because uh, this Dragapult with that will o you know, if you just burn that Groudon, Groudon's not going to do any damage against this Evil Tall in the late game, and then Evil Tall should really be able to just power through at this point. So, yeah, I think the, the main thing here is that Venusaur this time around didn't do as much as Adi probably would have preferred. Uh, Joseph kind of timed how he played that Colossal really well. Max Guard turn two was so smart. Uh, and then by bringing out the Groudon, uh, like Adi put himself in a really weird spot, right? Where it was like, you don't want to take that will o but then he just switched back out. And that, that sun resulted in the Venusaur taking even more damage. And so uh, this is the thing. Colossal is actually really good in this matchup. You just have to make sure you don't get one shot by like that Max Quake from Venusaur or a potential Max Quake from that Groudon. Definitely one of those things that makes Colossal such a dangerous team to be facing off again. Sure enough, that Evil Tall hitting the field for the Incineroar here. 
Crown on just going for a protect, not wanting to risk that Will-O-Wisp here. So surely this is not going to connect. And let's see where this Charizard is targeting. Just going for a Heat Wave. Not <laughs> 3 <laughs> HP left on that Dragapult. So close picking up the KO. Oh, but the residual effect is going to clean it up. Fine Lash still kicking around and is going to just finish up that KO that Charizard couldn't quite get here. Definitely the best play possible for Mahdi's end. I think, you know, you're able to bypass and the uh, Will-O-Wisp also get a KO on Slide Dragapult. So the combination of that Heat Wave plus the Vine Lash is enough. But the thing is now Joseph gets a free switch and into that Incineroar. Even a single Intimidate onto Groudon makes Groudon feel really, really sad, honestly. This Charizard's about to faint as well. So uh, Adi here just going for, or Joseph going for the safe option. Uh, fake out onto the Groudon, preventing from getting a potential Sword Stance or just a Rock Slide off. Sucker Punch here will finish that Charizard. And then you've effectively got a 2v1 with Incineroar and Evil Toe against a minus one Groudon. You know, Groudon actually can do good damage into Incineroar and Evil Toe, especially with something like Rock Slide, but it, even a single Intimidate just makes it do so much less. And Incineroar and Evil Toe are such a bulky Pokemon where I think a Intimidated Groudon is not going to win this endgame scenario, especially because what's awkward is, you know, let's say Evil Tall didn't have Swords Dance, then maybe your win condition is to get two Swords Dances off and then just click Rock Slide, or even a single Swords Dance and Rock Slide. But because Joseph has that uh, foul play on the Evil Tall, you can't even go for that as a win condition. The fake out going out on the ground on here and the Sucker Punch, as you said, connecting with that Charizard, going to pick up that KO, leaving these players in a 2v1 endgame here. And... You said this is definitely not looking too good for Adi here. I mean, Brown is such a strong Pokemon, just not in this position. Yeah, definitely not. I think with Groudon's in Series 8, you know, you typically either want to pick up a lot of damage or get a Swords Dance off in an opportune time. But once again, not very easy to do that in this matchup. And I, I like what Joseph's going for here. You should always just Oblivion Wing. Do not risk the chance of a Groudon getting a critical hit Rock Slide onto the Evil Tall, because that's actually how you can lose the game right now. So just make sure you keep healing up. I think with that recovery, even if Rock Slide crits, I'm thinking Evil Tall might be able to survive just because it's such a bulky Pokemon. It's really just your best option here. Oblivion Wing heals so much and yeah, yeah, uh, Evil Tall comes to shine here. Let's see how much it does to that Groudon. Uh, a little bit of chip here, but every little bit of healing that this Evil Tall can get back is going to count. Rock Slide coming out. We'll connect with both of the Pokemon. And getting that berry back on the Incineroar. But let's see if Flinch comes out. Nope, the Incineroar is going to hit a Flare Blitz into this Groudon. Picking up that KO, critical hit, huge damage here, and these players are left in a 1-1 one -one scenario, and it's going to be going to a game three here. Yeah, I think that crit there in the end, probably a little anticlimactic. I, I think that uh, Joseph was in a really commanding spot anyway, especially after Rock Slide didn't flinch that first time around. You know, Flare Blitz just does so much damage. As soon as you don't flinch there, uh, Evil Tall's in a really, really commanding spot. I think Adi maybe had some very slim chances to win there, especially if... Joseph made the incorrect plays and then also got flinched a bunch on the Incineroar, but as soon as you don't flinch that first time around, even without a crit, that Flare Blitz should do enough damage where Evil Tall can finish it off in subsequent turns. So Adi still had a small chance to win that game. That's why you really never want to give up until, you know, the game's 100% over. Uh, but that played out really differently, right? We saw the same Pokemon from both players and that was completely night and day from that first game. So the question here is what adjustments can Adi make? You know, you could go with the same stuff, maybe try some Sleep Powder shenanigans with Venusaur. There's also that Porygon 2 in the back and I'm thinking, one approach that Adi could take in this game is actually setting up Trick Room with Porygon 2, bringing out Groudon under Trick Room, and then Dynamaxing it and trying to sweep under Trick Room. So those are really my two best bestes, best guesses for uh, how Adi can maybe adjust if he doesn't want to play the same way as that last game. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a fantastic game three. So many different ways these players can approach it. And let's get this game three going and see how these players adjust to the trying to move on to this global finals. What will be funny here is if it's the same leads. I see the Grim Star <laughs> on Venusaur, so perhaps it is, because Dragapult Colossal is so good at it. <laughs> and it is from both players the same lead, uh, so very interested to see how they're going to be piloting these two this time around. The same leads for all three matches, but two very different game results, and I'm really excited to see how this shakes up. 
I just want to comment, Joseph made his move so fast. I think that like, he, you know, doesn't want to stay with Colossal this time around, either aware of a potential maybe Sleep Powder strat this time around, right? Because from Audi's side, if you're aware of, or you're trying to counter the play that Joseph made in game two, and you're expecting, you know, Surf Vocalith once again into Grimmsnarl, you could switch that Grimmsnarl out into Groudon, and that might be what's happening here. Sure enough, that Groudon coming in for the Grimmsnarl here, getting that sun set up, so the Venusaur with the Floral ability can go lightning fast. Colossal swapping out as well, going into that evil tall. And let's see what this Venusaur decides to go for here. And it <laughs> is the Sleep Powder coming out. It is going to connect here onto the evil tall. <laughs> and I mean, fantastic that it wasn't, it didn't hit into that Colossal, but you never want one of your Pokemon to be put to sleep on the first turn. Yeah, absolutely, especially if it can't, you know, burn a turn to sleep immediately. This Evil Tall is essentially useless, at least for this next turn, and it's basically a completely vulnerable spot. So, I, I, I like the play Joseph's going for here. I mean, he's contemplating going for Surf. Like, you could just switch that Evil Tall right back out into Colossal and Surf, right? Now, from Adi's end, you could potentially read into that. Say, for example, just go for a Precipice Blades or an Earth Power into that slot immediately. You could also fish uh, for another Sleep Powder here into the Evil Tall switch out. So, there are definitely a lot of options. Uh, and I, I think you see that there's the safety goggles here on the Dragapult, so you definitely don't want to Sleep Powder into that slot. This next turn is really critical, honestly, because I think, you know, Joseph read into that Sleep Powder turn one, but he's still in a pretty tough spot, needs to get this turn correctly, because if Adi predicts this and KOs the Colossal with, like, the Venusaur and Groudon, I think, honestly, Adi will just win the game after that. Mm -hmm. Colossal swapping in. Oh, the Groudon, oh, oh. though, is going to be swapping out here, going into that Charizard. So it's all going to be up to what this Venusaur does. Earth Going for the Earth Power, oh, but into the, the Dragapult! This Colossal, that would have been a devastating Earth Power into this, that slot if Adi got that prediction. But instead, this Dragapult able to hit the Surf and set up this Colossal with that Steam Engine, getting that weakness policy. And that Colossal with the free swap in here was absolutely huge. Yeah, I, I was thinking, you know, Adi was in a position to really punish this switch, but he probably didn't want to get hit by a will was from that Dragapult. Uh, wanted to position the Charizard in. Joseph, on the other hand, makes this really nice play, gets the Colossal in safely. That was such a high risk, high reward play, but man, are we seeing the reward pay off right now. Joseph somehow managed to get Colossal with Steam Engine, Weakness Policy activated, and the Sun is up right now as well, so you let those Max Flares do even more damage. And, you know, Adi this time around didn't get that Light Screen off immediately, so really, really smart positioning there from Joseph's end. This is still far from over, though, from Adi's perspective. I think this next turn, what's curious is, you know, do you just go for the Dynamax on Venusaur, or do you actually just launch a Sleep Powder into the Colossal slot? Uh, the Evil Tall, you know, sleeping in the back means that it's going to be relatively useless for quite a while in this game, and if you're able to actually put this Colossal to sleep, that'd be a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Charizard swapping out on Adi's end, going into that Grim Snarl, as this Colossal is going to get the opportunity to make a big hit into it. And as you said, that light screen didn't go up on Audi's side at the beginning of the game, so the damage from this Colossal is going to be huge. So let's see what Audi goes for here. Uh, Vocally just coming out immediately, so obviously, you know, getting those residual effects off immediately. Uh, and targeting the Charizard slot there, you know, that KOs Charizard if Charizard stays in. If Grimstar comes in, well, it just took as much damage as you saw. It is going to be Sleep Powder, so no max on the Venusaur, and it actually connects with the Colossal. So this is a really interesting match where, like, Joseph's gotten the Colossal activated, but now the Colossal and the Evil Tower are asleep and haven't even, you know, taken a turn of sleep yet on either's end, and Adi still has his Dynamax to play with. Hmm. The Rock's damage is going to be hitting into these two Pokemon, though, picking up that KO on the Grimmsnarl. So Charizard got to get out of danger's way, but the Grimmsnarl going down instead. So there's going to be no screen set up on Adi's side at all for the rest of this game. <laughs> so the Colossal getting to stick around for another turn, but being asleep, I mean... Joseph's gonna have to get a little lucky here with the sleep turns or potentially even look to swap to preserve it. I I mean, you never want it to go down, but at the same time, it's not going to be doing much here. Yeah, and I, I, to explain, you know, both plays, I think that was a smart play from both ends. Joseph didn't want to take a 
Like, for example, if Charizard max last turn and then just max Quake into Colosso, that could be a disaster, right? So Joseph wants to cover for that option. Uh, it's, it, you can't cover for the Sleep Powder and the Charizard max option, so it just goes with the safer winning Charizard. I mean, if Sleep Powder misses from Venusaur there from Adi's end, I think Joseph actually probably just wins the game. So Adi made the right play in switching out, getting that Sleep Powder off, but uh, now it's a really interesting spot for both players. Mm -hmm. Colossal burning that first turn of sleep. Earth power from the Venusaur. Hitting into it. The Dragapult firing back with a breaking swipe. Just getting a bit of chip off. And it's going to be big with this Gymnastic Wax. Charizard goes for the Airstream. Trying to get a little bit of the speed control. Hitting into the Dragapult. Bringing it right down. But not quite picking up the Kago here. But getting a bit of speed control on his side of the field. Yeah, and Audi's side is just, you know, running dangerously low on HP right now. The Vocalit effect, once again, is just so good. And this Charizard taking a beating from both the Vocalit and the Solar Power of Venusaur. Also, you know, getting dangerously low as well. So, yeah, Colosso did uh, take a turn of sleep there. So, if Audi doesn't address it right away, I mean, it can just wake up here. And if it actually gets another attack off, it feels like it's in such a commanding spot. Um, but it looks like Joseph's actually contemplating a potential switch here. Uh, so, I think the... Oh, uh, okay. He's looking for the double switch, which is certainly an interesting option here. I mean, uh, you it's such a weird spot to be in right now, right? Because Joseph just doesn't have that much damage on the board, but Adi's field is also slowly uh, fainting from the Vocalit damage. And so, yeah, he is actually going to switch that Colossal out, which I have to say I wasn't expecting, but uh, I think definitely can make some sense, especially if you're worried about just getting KO'd before the Colossal can attack. Yeah, that Eveltal coming out onto that slot. Last turn, that Venusaur did target an Earth Power into that slot. So, the Venus. <laughs> I don't know what the Venusaur could do here. Um, the Incineroar swapping in for that Dragapult. So, there's going to be a little bit of fake out pressure on the field next turn. Let's see how this shakes up. The Venusaur with the Earth Power not targeting into the Colossal slot, but instead looking to get that KO on Ooh. the Dragapult slot. So, Incineroar taking some damage, but the Charizard going for the Quake into the Colossal slot, and nothing's going to be happening from that Charizard this turn. Yeah, that's such a good switch in from Joseph's end. To deny any potential boosts and waste the turn of max is really, really sweet. And now Adi still has one more turn of that max on his end on Charizard, but uh, yeah, I mean, Joseph's going to need to definitely get some wake up soon enough with this Colossal, but the switch is definitely or a start, right? Uh, Adi can't really cover for every single option. Uh, for example, yeah, it's it's really tough to go for an attack that gets you guaranteed damage off. Uh, what's also interesting is even if you go for the Wildfire in this game, uh, Incineroar and Colossal actually don't really take that residual damage. And so uh, Wildfire a little bit less effective here as a result. So it this is going to be a really interesting finish. This definitely feels like the closest game out of the three that we've had so far. I honestly really have liked how both players have approached this game. Uh, it's been really high risk, really high reward, and those opening turns definitely uh, put us in a really interesting end game now. Adi switching up that Venusaur, going into that ground on, getting that sun set back up here as the Eveltal is also going to go for the switch back into that Colossal. <laughs> it's still asleep, but it did get that one turn of sleep burnt off earlier. Quake coming out from the Charizard, hitting into that Incineroar, oh. bringing it real close down to the red, but not quite picking up that KO either. Yeah, and that's why you see Life Orb so often on Charizard, right? Able to just do the extra little bit of damage that you need to actually pick up some KOs. But it's a really big survival there from Incineroar. It's able to heal back up and get that parting shot off. And that's actually so critical because we know that Audi has that Groudon, right? And so if Incineroar fainted there, you don't have Intimidate for that Groudon anymore. But now you're able to conserve the Incineroar, bring it back out for another Intimidate. So... Yeah, I mean, that's, I think it, it felt really, really tough if that actually faints there. Now, Joseph's Pokemon are still sleeping. He hasn't really burned too many turns of sleep either, so uh, needs to get some quick wake-ups, I think. But Adi has also taken so much damage across the board, especially on that Charizard and on that Venusaur. And, you know, Groudon coming in and taking that Volklet will chip it away at it as well. So uh, the Volklet has just done so much work for Joseph in this game. While his Pokemon are sleeping, he's made some nice defensive plays to let that damage kind of add up real quickly. So it's going to be really interesting to see how long these Pokemon stay asleep for. I mean, you can always get unlucky here and have them sleep for <laughs> quite a few turns here. And 
they haven't, like, as you said, they haven't really burned off too many burn turns of sleep yet. The Colossal has burned off at least one, so it's going to be interesting to see if either of them get the wake up. All right. I'm curious here. Yeah, I'm curious if Groudon goes for like a Swords Dance at any given point. Uh, it might be nervous to, right, because you're worried about the Evil Toe just waking up after your turn. Let's see, you Swords Dance, and then Evil Toe can just foul play you and potentially pick up a Knockout. So it might just go for a Rock Slide instead. Doesn't want to deal with those sleep turns. All right, Groudon just going for the Rock Slide here. Dealing a good amount of damage down to that Evil Toe here. And <laughs> the Evil Toe is still sleeping. There is still Incineroar and that Dragapult in on Joseph's side here. Both of them really low, but the Intimidate pressure and the Fake Out pressure that this Incineroar offers is really nice. It is super, super nice. And yeah, missing out that KO from Max Quick earlier definitely feels bad now, right? Imagine if Incineroar was not on the field any longer. Uh, then it would effectively just be a 2v3 and you don't get that Intimidate off into the Groudon. So I think Joseph's still hoping for a quick wake up here with that Evil Tall. You know, Groudon could have risked it last turn and gone for a Sword Stance, but can so totally see why Adi didn't want to risk that because if, you know, Evil Tall gets an early wake up, then Foul Play is just going to absolutely destroy the Groudon. So here, you know, Joseph opting for the safe double up into the Evil Tall slot. I think Adi may be content to just keep clicking Rock Slide. This is going to be a really close finish. I mean, similar situation to the end game of last time, but now Adi does have a couple of more resources. You could potentially withdraw that Groudon out into that Venusaur, but that's really risky, right? Because then you might be at risk of a double KO. Fake out into the Charizard. Bring it down real close, Ooh. but not quite fake out the KO. But the Eveltal is not waking up this turn. Oh. Incineroar <laughs> dodging that Rock Slide, though. It will kick. They will connect with the Veltal here, but that solar power is going to finish off this Charizard. And <laughs> I mean, that Rock Slide not connecting with the Incineroar kind of stings a little bit too. Yeah, definitely stings. I think I don't think it would have KO'd because of the Intimidate, but definitely could have been close. And wow, I mean, this is getting so, so close because like, Groudon on Audi's side looks really strong against all the Pokemon that Joseph has. But once again, uh, the Incineroar has Intimidate, the Evil Toe has Foul Play, the Dragapult has will So they all have some slight answers into Joseph's side of the team. And so uh, this poor Evil Toe, you know, just trying its best to wake up here. And uh, Joseph, I, I like the option to, you know, maybe go for a parting shot here. Uh, that way you're able to get another Intimidate off essentially. But th the tough thing here is, you know, there is still Venusaur to deal with here, right? So if you don't opt for, uh, like he's going for that Sucker Punch to basically cover for the option. Now, uh, Adi could actually go for a really interesting option, which is Sleep Powder, you know, into the Incineroar slot, which wouldn't work with this Dragapult switching, or try to Sleep Powder Evil Tall. So let's see if Adi decides to attack and whether or not the Evil Tall wakes up here. Oh, it does. Right. Evil Soul waking up and does get to connect that Sucker Punch, picking up the KO on this Venusaur. Ronan going for the Rock Slide. Bringing <laughs> both of these Pokemon real low, but not picking up the knockout on either of them here. And Ronan is now left all by itself, very healthy against Joseph Seen, which is not looking too healthy, but so it does have the numbers advantage here going into this end game. Well, oh, this is so close. I mean, if there's any Pokemon game, oh, it's will o -Wisp from Dragon Ball, and it misses the And Groudon. it's the will o miss unable to connect here. That would have been so big in reducing the damage. Oblivion Wing will get a bit of health back, but that will o miss cutting down the attack from the ground, but <laughs> misses the Rock Slide into the Dragapult as well, so might even have a chance to redeem itself. Oh my goodness, yeah, I mean, the will o -Wisp miss definitely hurts there, and I, I feel like if it connects with Dragapult, it's such a tough spot, because then the Evil Soul is just so low. <sighs> but yeah, the will o -Wisp is going to connect this time around, and so, I mean, the margins are so razor thin here, but if Evil Soul can hang on after this Oblivion Wing, then I think let Joseph will win the game, because then Incineroar comes out, you can just fake out Oblivion Wing, Oblivion Wing Flare Blitz, and you're probably good, so... Oh, what a roller coaster of events here in this endgame. Evil Tall managing to wake up, get that sucker punch off, and that's a, that looks like enough HP. So if Groudon doesn't get the Rock Slide critical hit onto Evil Tall, I'd be surprised if we're able to actually pick up a KO with Rock Slide right now. Mm -hmm. Rock Slide is going to connect with both of them. <laughs> Not doing enough to that Evil Tall. That burn, putting in work, connecting that, that second time around was. Huge and the miss from the rock slide on the ground onto the dragon pole too, giving it that chance to go for it a second time. 
was humongous. And Incineroar gets to come out here with that Intimidate, dropping the Groudon's attack even more, and this is definitely close. Uh, both players played so well in this third game, I think. Like, Joseph... Adi clearly had adjustment to the uh, game two play that Joseph made on turn one. Uh, and then uh, Joseph adjusted to that. But then the Sleep Powders, you know, made it really, really scary. As soon as that Sleep Powder connected on Evil Toe in the early game, you know, Joseph knew, hey, I have to hope to not maybe take like three turns of sleep with the Evil Toe and the Colossal. The double switch turn was really smart, you know, eating up that Max Quake into that Evil Toe slot to get a free switch in and let that vocal damage go off a little bit more. But Honestly, this this feels like one of the best games I've seen ever in Series 8. I'm really impressed by how both players approach this. And it's not over yet, but it feels really tough to win now that the Groudon's uh, intimidated a bunch of times and is burnt. I, I mean, you're basically, I think, hoping for rocks like crits, but even with rocks like crits, I don't know if that's enough here, but let's see. Oh, yeah. it's Precipice Blades. Precipice Blades, Blades coming out, just looking to pick up the KO on this Incineroar here, oh. and it's... <laughs> It's just short. The Incineroar is able to get that Flare Blitz off and just pick up that KO. So Joseph takes the set 2-1 in an absolutely fantastic set of matches, as you said. These were, these were such a roller coaster, and both players played so well, making such good adjustments from game to game.